Pay close attention. The news you are about to see is fulfilling Bible prophecy. Welcome to another edition of YPN News, bringing you the news that relates to Bible prophecy and foretold by Yeshua Hawkins. Well, the coronavirus pretty much dominating our news stories tonight. Right. We have um, quite a surge in new cases. Mm -hmm. The death toll is rising. And also, um, they're talking about that second possible yeah, shutdown, shutdown, which has many people concerned. Right. Um, we're also going to focus in on a few countries uh, like Brazil, Pakistan, India, and even several of the European countries um, and seeing how they're dealing with it and the surge that they're experiencing. So these stories and many more. But first, there is a new concern that a second wave of the coronavirus is looming as cases rise across America. Now, 34 states have reported an increase in cases. 34 states reported that increase wow. of the virus with over 20 states setting records for the number of daily infections, some even for multiple days. Now, ex experts are speculating the increase is mainly due to people lowering their defense because they are worn out by the quarantines and the, and the pandemic as a whole. Now, people want to get back to their normal lifestyle. Yeah, I bet. Well, the Midwest seems to be getting hit particularly hard right now. Michigan is warning of a second wave uh, all ICU beds are filled in Oklahoma City and in Wisconsin, where they reported a record 3,000 plus new cases in one day. Well, currently they are setting up a field hospital to handle 550 more patients. Well, Dr. Anthony Fauci told the country, we're in a bad place right now. We've got to turn this around. Now, to make matters worse, one leading vaccine study and an antibody treatment were both put on hold this week. Uh, Johnson & Johnson paused their vaccine trial when one of the participants fell ill. Mm -hmm. uh, officials also had to stop pharmaceutical giant Eli Lilly from working on an antibody therapy due to safety issues. They didn't say what they were exactly. That's right. Well, the case surges are leading government officials to reconsider using lockdowns again. However, the World Health Organization is warning against this. Uh, Dr. Mike Ryan, the executive director of Health Emergencies Program for WHO, made the statement, what we want to try to avoid uh, are these massive lockdowns that are so punishing to communities, to society, and to everything else. Dr. Deborah Burks, head of the Coronavirus Task Force, warned Americans about not letting down their guard. She said, if they are primarily indoors for get-togethers with family and friends this fall and winter and remove their masks, the virus can be spread. While many are trying to figure out how to handle a huge uptick in cases, President Trump is pressing Congress to pass another round of coronavirus stimulus aid. The president tweeted, stimulus, go big or go home. But the United States is not the only country experiencing a rise in COVID-19 infections. In fact, Europe, Southeast Asia and South America are all in the same boat. Now, a second wave has hit France and French hospitals hardest. Are, uh, they're seeing almost 26 new infections on Saturday. Now, that is more than they saw in the initial onset of the virus in spring. Major cities like Paris have shut down bars again, while restaurants still remain open, at least for now. Well, furthermore, the new measures prohibit the selling of alcohol and the consumption of alcohol in public spaces after 10 p.m. Now, there is also a ban on gatherings in public spaces of more than 10 people. In large facilities like stadiums, the cap is at 1,000. Now, protesters, however, are not limited to these numbers if they have their formal permission to protest. Now, Paris police explain the need for these measures now are because the pandemic was coming so fast and hard that the healthcare system was about to be completely overwhelmed. So they tried to 
put a couple uh, measures in place to slow it down. Right, right. Well, like France, Britain, and other European governments are scrambling to get new plans together so they will not have to face national lockdowns again. In Berlin, for example, they have imposed a curfew for the first time in 70 years in widespread shutdowns of Scottish pubs. Uh, but many fear the economy will continue to spiral downward and unemployment will continue to rise. Well, not all countries are changing their lives for Corona. In Brazil, where they have just passed the 5 million mark for coronavirus cases, there are few signs of a lockdown. Now, Rio's famous San Bernardone Stadium is closed and the next uh, year's carnival parade postponed until a vaccine can be made readily available to the public. But that's really where measures to prevent the spread have stopped. And now the Latin American country holds the status of second largest in number of COVID related deaths at 115,000. Yeah, that's not an honor. I um, nope. suppose that they want to have at this time. Now, one resident told Al Jazeera, I feel that people, especially here in the slums, act like nothing was happening, as if the pandemic were over. Bars are crowded, few people wear masks, everybody acts relaxed. But the truth is, hundreds are dying every day. Well, one reason for this attitude might be from Brazil's president himself. President Bolsonaro uh, has made has not made a big deal about the virus even after he became infected himself. Um, now health professionals worry the second wave will hit their country before the first is even over. Some believe the because the government never implemented strict measures with the first wave, now it will be even harder to make corrections as the second wave hits because People are already tired of the pandemic. Yeah, people tend to want to get back to a sense of normalcy, mm -hmm. even if they, that puts them at risk of contracting the virus. They just they just rather get out of the house and get off with it, uh, un, from underneath the restrictions that mm -hmm. are in place. Well, researchers have shown that infections in poor areas can be four times greater than in rich neighborhoods. So the plan is to track down those who have the virus in hopes of stopping the spread. But there are 16 slums in the Complexo de Mare with, uh, within which 140,000 people are living. That is a population larger than 97% of all Brazilian cities. So this is a huge undertaking for a country of 200 million people. Well, India has also reported, uh, has actually reported fewer coronavirus infections than Europe. Now in the last week, however, the virus is widespread in the country and not going away anytime soon. Now outside the US, it is the only other country to have seen over 7 million cases and currently has the highest daily death rate on the planet. Wow. On the other end of the spectrum, there is one country that has not reported one single case so far, and that is North Korea. At a military parade over the weekend, North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un reported his country has not experienced one case as he then offered his condolences to the rest of the world. Mm. Well, we're now going to turn to our field correspondent, Larry McGee, who has been covering what's been taking place in Pakistan with their coronavirus and how they've been affected. Mm -hmm. uh, the economy being very hit, uh, hit very hard there, but also they've had to deal with some flooding. They have to deal with yeah. the locusts that were reported. So they've been hit in several different means. Mm -hmm. They're all taking its uh, toll on the people there, the economy and the people That's as well. Right. Right. Uh, Larry, what do you have for us on Pakistan? How are they handling? this pandemic. Despite increasing cries for normalcy emerging and becoming more insistent among the global populace, the thawed pandemic of the coronavirus is itself increasing, attacking immune systems and crumbling economies as it unleashes its destructive wrath. For the purpose of trying to preserve some shred of their economy, many nations are reopening despite serious concerns. One of the latest of those nations is Pakistan, who has done so while cautioning its citizens that the country is not out of the woods yet. The nation had already been grappling with serious food instability with millions of its people struggling to maintain supplies. Analysts say one of the biggest challenges is that as soon as the nation begins to make gains, it's hit by plagues of locusts, droughts, and similar calamities, which undermine its progress and prevent it from developing a strong footing. 
Now, of course, there is COVID. And like as is being done in other parts of the world, so too in Pakistan are political opponents using the unstoppable destructiveness of the plague as an opportunity to advance their agendas and point an accusatory finger at the other guy. There is political unrest in the country and citizens in Pakistan are now saying that conditions in the country have gone from bad to worse. And there are some who are now calling for the country's current government to resign. There is no true sign of things improving where the rate of those newly infected with the present plague is concerned. America is now reporting over 8 million confirmed cases of COVID, with over 200,000 having succumbed to the complications produced by the affliction due to co-infections or comorbidities. At this point, the pathogen's onslaught has picked up steam to the tune of 1 million infections per month. Hospitals are overflown and doctors are now turning away those seeking help as pharmacologists are breaking the news that the experimental preparations and vaccines that have become the false hope of so many won't be released until at least next month. With record-breaking infection rates overwhelming states all across the country, American doctors are now said to be pleading with governors to mandate masks in public, and they are cautioning against partaking in holiday celebrations, which have the potential to be super spreader events and are pretty much a certainty to mark a person for infection. It is not just America which is experiencing spikes in those newly infected. However, the World Health Organization is reporting a record increase in those being daily afflicted with the virus globally. With the high level of immunocompromisation that currently exists throughout the world, top health officials are also expecting as many as 12,000 to 20,000 deaths by Election Day in the U.S. More than half of America's states are seeing rises with story after story of waves of infection sweeping through areas, including personal stories of those infected with the virus broadcasting their horrific experiences in an effort to combat the notion that the plague is somehow a hoax. Many of the nation's top industries are said to be sobering up to the reality of things, and they are now reported to be bracing for a long fight against the virus. For IPN News, I'm Larry McGee. Katan Jeff, back to you. Yeah, well, it seems like, you know, just some places uh, seem not to be able to catch a break. And on top of this, you know, besides for the natural disasters, we're seeing the continuous rise in cases of the coronavirus. Well, Dr. Uche Blackstock, an emergency room doctor in New York City and the founder and CEO of the group Advancing Health Equity spoke with CBS News concerning COVID-19 in the more rural areas. She said, we're seeing a surge that's avoidable and because of multiple small gatherings and we definitely have to be concerned, she said, about Halloween, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, that, of course, because uh, it's been proven that the gatherings, these gatherings, particularly a lot of these small gatherings, accelerate the spread of COVID-19. Right. So what they're saying is all oh, this this holiday season now, when everybody gets together, is really going to push yeah. that uh, coronavirus so forward. Definitely puts a new meaning on the season of giving. Wow. Mm. Well, CBS's chief medical correspondent, Dr. John LaPook, interviewed Dr. Fauci concerning the U.S.'s potential road to another shutdown. When asked how bad things would have to get for Dr. Fauci to advocate another national shutdown, he said things would have to get pretty bad. The country is fatigued with restrictions, so we want to use public health measures not to get in the way of opening up the economy, but to being a safe gateway to opening the economy. He continued, so instead of saying opening up the economy, get back jobs or shut down, no, put away uh, the shutdown and we're going to use public health measures to help us safely get to where we want to go. Well, as you know, many companies are in a race now to try to create a vaccine for the coronavirus and in that race, there must be vaccine trials tested on actual humans. Well, Johnson & Johnson has had to put one of their trials, which uh, were in the final phase, on pause because of a study participant actually becoming ill. Mm. Now, the news goes in tandem with the autumn surge in cases as several states set single-day records. Now, mostly in the Midwest and the Great Plains, in North Dakota, only a few hospital beds remain and the state of Wisconsin has a positivity rate of nearly 
twenty percent. Very high. Yes, yes. Well, one doctor said that the current cases uh, today show more new positive cases, more hospitalizations, and more deaths than we had during the entire pandemic. Well, Dr. Fauci uh, also said we're in a bad place right now and we've got to turn this around. Well, while state and local officials work to prevent large gatherings like raves and worship protests, small private gatherings are also spreading the virus. Why? Because people's guards are down and with people, we know, or that is we assume, if I know you, you couldn't have COVID. That, of course, was a statement by Dr. Deborah Burks regarding the small gatherings and the spread of COVID-19. Well, it's not just the U.S. Europe is also experiencing another surge as U.K. hospitals have more COVID patients than when they were in their first lockdown. Now, Prime Minister Boris Johnson presented a new multi-tiered alert system from moderate to very high ranked by infection risk. Now, new lockdown measures are expected in countries such as Italy and France, which set an all-time high for new cases this weekend. Now, the second wave that experts feared now affecting both sides of the Atlantic and a lot of different places as we're covering here mm -hmm. have experiencing or are experiencing those all-time high records, That's whether right. it be death, uh, the death toll, new cases, or so forth, the surge everywhere it seems to be going yeah, up. And those records are continually being broken right. on a daily basis. Yep. Also, doctors are starting to see the first case of reinfection and scientists say having COVID-19 will not make you immune to it in the future. They cited a 25-year-old man who caught the virus in April, tested negative the following month, only to catch it again in June. Hmm. Well, the CDC has come out with a new report suspecting that the virus could kill another 23,000 Americans by the first week of November. Now, currently, 37 states are seeing infections and hospitalizations growing, and with falling temperatures forcing people indoors, experts are expecting the surge in cases to get even worse. That's right. The uh, WHO's chief scientist also warned that the recent surge in coronavirus cases worldwide will be followed by a rising death toll that currently stands at 5,000 per day. The chief scientist said that mortality increases always lag behind increasing cases by a couple of weeks, signaling a spike in death tolls in the cards. Well, currently, the nearly 38 million have been infected and nearly 1.1 million have died, so deaths are not on the decline. Well, in a CBS News interview with Nora O'Donnell, the CDC director warned that coronavirus cases could soar as a result of Thanksgiving gathering. Now, Dr. Fauci agreed with the statement, saying uh, that is unfortunately a risk when you have people coming from out of town gathering in an indoor setting. You don't know what the status of it is. It is unfortunate because that's such a sacred part of American tradition, the family, the family gathering around Thanksgiving, but that is a risk, he said. Mm -hmm. So what does COVID-19 have to do with uh, sea life? Well, in the next video, a sharp advocacy group is worried how COVID-19 vaccines could kill a large population of sharks. Let's take a look.
But Tanya, you'd have to wonder, I mean, I see why they um, fear the killing of a, a very large number of sharks mm -hmm. if they're going after that, um, that substance that comes from the shark's liver. But you have to wonder, what problems would that then cause by using an animal like mm -hmm. that, which mm -hmm. they found as, you know, they use a lot of these animals, right. um, animals that, you know, are usually not consumed. Right. Um, they use those in these vaccines, in these trials, but you have to wonder what side effects that is going to cause. Yeah, yeah that's pretty scary. Well, President Trump at a recent campaign gathering spoke about the coronavirus and expressed an interesting opinion concerning what he thought corona in coronavirus meant. Mm -hmm. He said, Corona-19, the China virus, it's got 21 different, na different names, but to me, Corona means Italy. Hmm. It's interesting that he actually expressed that because uh, if you remember, uh, that was one of the things that um, Israel Hawkins, overseer of the House of had actually mentioned some time ago that coronavirus didn't actually start in China. It right. actually came from Italy. And interestingly enough, as he's been bringing out in a lot of the sermons that uh, it was even originated even farther back than that. But uh, for people to learn a lot more about the coronavirus and, of course, what you can do to protect yourself from it or to, you know, uh, heal yourself from it, so to speak, you know, uh, wait out that five months and then what you need to do after that, contact the House of Yahweh. And when you do, don't forget to request your free copy of the Prophetic Word magazine and the monthly newsletter. Here's how. To contact the House of Yahweh, you can write them at The House of Yahweh, P.O. Box 2498, Abilene, Texas 79604. You can call them at 1-800-613-9494. Visit them on any of their websites by going to Yahweh.com, YeshualHawkins.com, or Yahweh'sBranch.com. You can also visit our website by going to YPNNews.com. If you would like to email the House of Yahweh, you can do so by emailing info at Yahweh.com. For any international calls, you can call the number that's on your screen now. And once again, don't forget the Israel Says program and the Ask Israel program by going to YisraelSays.com or AskYisrael.com. Well, don't go anywhere. Up next, Yisrael Hawkins. From all of us here at YPN News, I'm Katan Alexander. And I'm Jeffrey Heinerman. Thank you for watching.